Welcome everybody to the Syndicated Pipe Club. And sorry about the extreme length between our two shows from the last one you recorded because you probably noticed there was a gap. And last week, which is currently the week that you're listening to, um, recording time anyway, there were just a few issues. My wife had an emergency MRI on... Uh, the day we typically record, and then after that, it just didn't work out. Things happen. So here we are, we're back. We're going to do a double episode of Airbender for you. We're going to look at episodes three and four. And as always, I have Greg with me. How are you doing tonight, Greg? Oh, a little bit out of breath, but, uh, you know, I'm, uh, other than that, I'm doing good. That's it was, good. uh, I, yesterday I got my uh, bagpipe, and so today I uh, practiced in the garage here, and uh, until I couldn't take it anymore, uh, so uh, that was fun. Uh, that that's going to keep me busy for a while, but uh, you know, uh, it's a pretty exciting time. So uh, things are good. How about you? How are things going? Well, I mentioned my wife's MRI, which is, uh, it, it turns something up, but it's not its not a major, major thing. She's got a little spot on her knee that's got to be fixed. It's most likely going to mean uh, a little bit of surgery, but it's going to be one of those micro procedures, you know, the, where they go in with the tube and the little little thingies, and, you know, they do the cut and the snip and fix the thing up. It's nothing major. More annoying than anything, because you're going to end up laid up and whatnot. Although, you know, and physio and all that stuff's got to go on. But, you know, other than that, it's, it's really not bad. She had a fall. We were just checking for for damage, and you know, there was no damage from the fall, but something else was discovered, which is not a bad thing because, you know, it's, it's one of those things that could get worse over time. So we caught it early thanks to, uh, to a slip on the ice a few weeks back, and we'll just get it fixed up and get, move on. Yeah. Make sure she doesn't go to a hospital with uh, one of those, like, uh, evening dramas from uh, you know, one of the network television shows. Oh, didn't you know those are all based on Canadian hospitals? Every single one of them. <laughs> I don't I don't care what they say. They are. They're all based on Canadian hospitals. I believe it. All that romance. No, no, that, that part is based on the American hospitals. <laughs> the Canadian hospitals, we're the ones that provide all the procedural drama. Because, you know, there's nothing but procedure and short staffing and all that stuff. Like, ad nauseum. So, you know, it's, it's a good yeah. combination of both. Yeah, going for a sore throat. And, and the episode was having to get your foot amputated. Yes, exactly. Exactly. But, you know, beyond that, you know, just nothing, uh, nothing too spectacular. Just... You know, dealing with the the idiots that decide what what we can and cannot do with uh, with our lives now. Yeah, they certainly enjoyed doing that. But that's all the politics I want to talk. Let's talk some Avatar: The Last Airbender. Yeah, but first, uh, what pipe and tobacco are you smoking tonight? Tonight I have me my Morgan Bones pipe, nice little bent pipe I picked up in the state, and in it I am smoking some Boswell Northwoods. And I can already tell based on the bit that you're smoking one of your Missouri Meerschaums. That is correct. This is uh, the Bing that I picked up, uh, that was like uh, from um, the Briar Patch, their uh, 2018 uh, Cobb of the Year. And, nice. uh, yeah, you know, I, I didn't see it available on their site, but when I went to Missouri near Shum, I saw that it was there and it was a really good price. So I was like, yes, uh, I will take one. And, uh, yeah, it's not my favorite cob, but it's a good cob. Um, and hopefully I actually get to, uh, go back to, uh, Missouri near Shum, uh, in May for Memorial Day. Because uh, we're visiting our uh, Missouri friends who are uh, the godparents to uh, our, my child. And then um, I'm smoking in this uh, some Cornell and Deal's Engine 3... 
356, I believe. Uh, it's the one with, it's the engine number with, uh, that's uh, based on, uh, that with a uh, deer tongue in it. And uh, so there was a guy on, uh, in the These Pipe Life chats that had ordered a couple of deer tongue blends and wasn't a fan of them. And I offered to trade him, you know, trade with him, because I happen to like uh, at least crooner, which, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I happen to smoke crooner in the, the bang pipe a lot, because I was... Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, uh, but uh, I don't know if it's necessarily, like, my favorite pipe tobacco to smoke, but, like, in terms of, like, the tin note, it's one of my favorites. Uh, like... Uh, the gentleman caller, I wish I could just like get another tin of that and just leave it in my car as like the air freshener because it's just that uh, wonderful smelling to me. It's not necessarily a like the classic pipe smell, it's its own unique smell that's uh, aroma that's just enjoyable to be around. Nice. Oh. Talking about the tobacco, it gave me a chance to uh, remember that we have some housekeeping to do, too. I almost forgot about it. So, as you guys know, whether you're listening to the podcast arm or watching us on the YouTubes, um, I tend, tend to go through and see what we have in regards to um, viewers and stuff like that. And uh, We've had gained a few uh, followers since the last time we were on air. We've gone from 166 to 168, uh, so we're ever, ever cl- getting ever closer to creeping up towards that 100,000 uh, subscribers so we can get the the silver button in the world's, uh, from what I understand, the world's most, uh, um, oh, what is this joke that I'm trying to do here? I've heard it all the time, and now I can't remember it. Yes, the world's most magnificent sponge. It's supposed to be the greatest sponge in the world, you know. So you, it keeps you nice and clean for all your videos. Nice. Watch out, PewDiePie. We're catching up to ya. Okay, and also, we did have get a comment on um, our video, Water, Earth, Fire, Tobacco, Smoke. My play on the airbender, you know, first line. Uh, it's from Piping Music out of Argentina. He says, great video. I really enjoyed it. Hugs from Argentina. So, Piping Music, thank you so very much for your comment. If you uh, have any suggestions of something that you might want us to uh, to uh, do, just like we say at the end of every video, you can leave a comment on it, or you can just email us and do all the stuff that we'll talk about later. But that, I believe, is everything. Let me just recheck the dashboard to there comment yep that's that's that all right so now we can actually move on to talking about the show real quick record check records fine but the music isn't awesome just wanted to check yeah I always like it when we catch it sooner because then I don't have like a lot of extra, like almost 10 minutes I got to fill with music lap in post, but eh, <laughs> it happens. Yeah. Well, better that than the end. Mm. Sometimes I think it might be better if we don't notice it until the end, because then I can just take the music that I play and just start to finish it. Gotcha. But, eh, I'll figure it out somehow. Yeah. So Avatar. The Avatar. Yes, Avatar, the last uh, airbender, episode three, which I do not remember the title of and do not have in front of me, but it's the one where they go to, I believe, the Northern Air Temple, one of the four, which was happened to have been Aang's home. So it's a homecoming type episode. Yeah, and uh, I this is so far. I believe this is probably my favorite episode so far. Which, you know, out of four episodes, that's not a very high bar to pass. <laughs> but uh, I 
enjoy well you know like i enjoy ruins i enjoy like abandoned places and so this whole episode just kind of uh, appealed to me in that aspect ticked a lot of boxes mm-hmm Yeah, for me, I'm, I don't mind looking at ruins and whatnot, too. Like it, it's, it's always kind of fun. But uh, for me, there for this episode, anyway, it wasn't so much you know, like seeing where I came from, seeing the air temple as it was in the flashbacks, as it is now in the present day of the series. It was more the story, uh, the beginning of the real character development, finding out mm-hmm. what happened, why Aang was uh, stuck in the iceberg when the kids found him two episodes ago. Don't mind me, folks. I got a twingy knee. And the weather here in Canada has been up and down, left and right. It really affects it. I, mean, I know I'm going to have arthritis yeah. in it in a few years if I don't already. No, that, I mean, that's a good point. Like, uh, you know, this is like a really good, uh, episode especially for Aang just seeing you know gl- some glimpses into his past and uh, like with his uh, you know with his mentor and uh, just seeing that burden on him of knowing that he's the avatar and not knowing what to do It was just, uh, it was nice. It was nice too to, like, I enjoyed, like, the airball uh, game that they had. Uh, again, like, well, not again, but like, uh, I, definitely one of the best things about this show is just simply the world building mm-hmm. and all the things that they created just for this world. And,. The imagination that went into it and just to come up with a, a sport like that that not only you know involves the the bending but uh it also looks interesting too yeah absolutely i mean as long as you had the ability to play it and, and kudos to to soccer for you tra- even getting up there and attempting to play it without any bending ability Mm-hmm. But uh, and, and lots of things too here that just uh, involve wind. Mm-hmm. You know, everything mm-hmm. from like the that's how you know to open the temple door, to even the, the the game there, like when you the little goal area where you throw the ball through. It reminds me of like a a lawn ornament that's out there that uh, is supposed to blow in the wind that someone might have in their garden. Kind of like a pinwheel almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's a theme that I believe will like continue through for the various different uh, temples that we go to. Because I know we'll see see it again um, in a couple of seasons when we're when they visit another air temple. And it's in a it's just down the road. We'll see something very similar in another temple in a few episodes. Right. Yeah, it's all like in some ways it kind of reminds me of like a video game like The Legend of Zelda, but uh, in a good way. Like it doesn't feel too video gamey or anything. Mm-hmm. Like it, it all makes sense, but it, it has those elements of like, oh, like this would definitely be like, uh, in some sort of like adventure puzzle game or something. Yeah, absolutely. And also, like, not only did they do world building, is in establishing places and a little bit of you know the background and history of the world. They even in, in their world world building started to um, establish the spirituality of the world because. We do learn that the Avatar is the bridge between the spirit world and the 
mortal realm at some point. I don't know if we know, learn, learn, have learned that yet quite or not. But what we do learn in this particular episode about uh, how the Avatar cycle works is that in, in, in this universe, there is only one being that is reincarnated. And that being is the Avatar. That's how the cycle works. It re the Avatar is reincarnated within the Four Nations in a particular cycle. cycle. So from Aang as an airbender, it would go water next, and then earth, and then fire. Because fire was the Avatar just prior to Aang. Right. Which makes it interesting, too, because the Fire Nation is are the antagonists of uh, this story. But the Avatar, you know, the previous Avatar, who does, you know, become a type of guide for Aang, you know, he, he is from the Fire Nation. And uh, I, I don't remember much of the their interactions just because I didn't really get to experience the show all that much. But I, I am interested in watching you know all that interplay between the two of them. Yeah, and we'll get to the we'll get to the first bit of that uh, before this season's out. If I remember right, about midway through is where we start seeing that happen on on a semi regular basis. But yeah, I, f I find it interesting that uh, out of all of the things they, they could have picked, they've picked things that, uh, for their different aspects of the world and the bending and all that. They picked a bunch of things that are really spiritual in nature. Because mm -hmm. most martial arts, they do have some sort of spiritual component to them whether you choose to use that component when you study those arts or not totally up to you but most of them do have some sort of connection to the spiritual and then they you know make the avatar uh, a reincarnated being so you get a little insight into how the creators of the show think too a little bit mm-hmm For sure. It's also uh, in this episode uh, we get a new uh, companion for the group. Ah, yes, Momo, the lemur monkey. At least I don't. Or, they keep calling him a lemur, I, I think, but mm -hmm. I think actually he might just be a lemur. Period. But he, you know, he's more of like uh, one of those like kind of comedic kind of characters. Mm. But yeah, then Ang gets a new pet. Sokka tries to eat him, which is pretty much Sokka's thing. It's, Always amusing. But it's another uh, another opportunity for us to see Aang go into his Avatar state for the third time in three episodes. Mm -hmm. Which was triggered by the fact that Aang discovered due to chasing the little lemur that uh, Monkyato, his... Uh, mentor was killed by firebenders in the original attack on the air nomads back when the war first started yes which we saw some uh, hints of that earlier like during the the game that they were playing when uh, they find uh, Sokka finds uh, the helmet mm -hmm. Fire Nation helmet and then Katara kind of hides it from them and from Aang. Yeah. 
But the one other big event that we do have during this uh, the show happens uh, when Aang uh, gets uh, upset and triggers the Avatar state. The statues in the, the sanctu- inner sanctuary, which is guarded by the wind door you were mentioning earlier, um, th- their eyes all light up, and then they cut to different Avatar temples in the Fire Nation, in the Earth Kingdom. I don't think they showed the Water Tribe one, but... Uh, the idea here is wherever there was a statue of the Avatar at that particular moment, its eyes started to glow white, signaling to those those monks or priests or whatever that the Avatar had returned. Yes. That is a major plot point because it will be relevant again very, very soon. Yes. Which uh, would have been rough for Zuko in his story you know, for this episode, considering he was trying to hide that he knew that the Avatar was back. Mm, that development didn't actually uh, affect Zuko's arc at all, because Zuko's arc was taking place in a in a port, getting a ship repaired, not um, with the. Uh, the priests in the Fire Nation. Uh, it would have, well, eventually it would have, uh, I guess is what I mean. Like, if he was trying to... Mm, keep, yeah, definitely. Uh, what, what, yeah, what I mean is just, uh, you know, Zuko was trying to keep the knowledge that the Avatar was back to himself just so that he could try to hunt down Aang, you know, without anyone to kind of fight, uh, you know, as, right. without any sort of rivals to get in his way but now it's out there the world knows that the avatar is back and uh that kind of that information is no longer uh a secret to just uh zuko and his ship yeah and even if that didn't happen it would have been known within the fire nation anyway given what happened in zuko's arc when he goes to uh to uh, get a ship prepared and the commander of the port Zhao, who will be a continuing sword thorn in the side of people for the rest of the season he uh, where he has his, has his people interrogate the crew and they of course, you know, being loyal Fire Nation citizens tell them what they want to know yes, the Avatar was here and He's only 12 years old, and, well, he got away. So, at the very least, the Fire Lord would have found out, if not because of the the statues glowing, because his commander would have likely told him in a report. Mm -hmm. True. And I have to say, I, I actually really enjoyed... Zuko's story in this episode because even though he's the antagonist uh, for this season, and he's in an adversarial role, in this episode, he's kind of like a uh, secondary protagonist in a way, just because we're following his story. And uh, obviously you can tell that like between the two, uh, Zhao is obviously more of a evil character mm, much so. whereas with you know with Zuko we understand that he's driven by this in a, in a sense of uh, you know trying to reclaim honor um, whereas and we see too that uh, you know during the, the dual fight that uh, between Zuko and, and Zhao that uh, Zuko is the one that you know has honor in, in that fight and will not uh, you know shows a, a bit of mercy to uh, to Zhao instead of uh, whereas uh, he was uh, willing to attack Zuko from behind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
just goes to show that some of the some of the things these Fire Nation people are are capable of doing. The ones that are really not the Joe Blow citizens, the ones that are you know fighting the war. Some of them are just horrible people, but those are the people that you need to fight wars, apparently. Mm -hmm. But in the big case, in the big sense of the episode, those are the major points for episode three. Yeah, no, and I would say to uh, uh, just to wrap up uh, Zuko's arc as a story is that uh, um, his uncle has some uh, pretty good lines here mm -hmm. and there. I like the stuff with, with the tea. Of course, but I again, said that's my favorite tea. Right, and you know he's part comical and part. Uh, you know, why is a, you know, mentor. And one of the reasons that uh, Iroh is one of my favorite characters in the show. No, absolutely. He's a, well, yeah, one of the, easily one of the best characters. Just yeah. a lot of fun and a good, a, a good foil for uh, Zuko. Mm, absolutely. And he's got a great arc too, even even for a secondary character, because he is a secondary character. He's got a great arc. He's one of the few secondary characters that you like to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so from here the Avatar, you know, zigzags all over the map as evidenced by when we come into episode four. Zuko thinking, seeing that uh, they can't track him because he's obviously a master strategist in regards to evading. Meanwhile, he is just a little kid looking for fun and it happens to take him zigzagging all over the map and takes him to Kyoshi Island to ride the giant elephant koi. Could you imagine finding a, sh a fish like that in the sea? Uh, well, I think that we have seen some of them uh, in some of the more polluted <laughs> rivers in, in Illinois. Well, not necessarily Illinois, but in the United States. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if we have uh, some giant uh, koi, elephant koi-sized fish in there, but they'd be most likely catfish. Yes, I was just thinking the same thing. Isn't that? I was just going to ask if you hadn't brought it up. Isn't that normally a catfish? Where what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we also don't. But we uh, don't have uh, monster-sized uh, eel in our. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, you don't have that either. We don't have yes. that either. Because the monster of this this episode is the Unagi, which I was informed before the episode started me is just Japanese for eel. And that creature is very eel like, really, mm -hmm. when you see it. So I can I can see why they use that use that name for that creature. It makes sense. Yeah. But I also um, imagine the, there. I also imagine a lot of sushi was had. Uh, I'm sure during the creation of uh, Avatar. I'm sure it was. But in this episode, the, the main point is not, not the fish, not the creature, but the island itself is Kiyoshi Island, which it was an island created by a, a uh, another avatar, the one prior to Roku, av Avatar Kiyoshi, one of Aang's past lives. So this episode's kind of fun in, in a different way than the other one. The last episode we were talking about in episode three was kind of fun. This one we see Aang as, um, yes, the Avatar, of course, but uh, we also see him as the quintessential person who's let their fame go to their head. Yeah, I would say this episode, it's um, more or less like we see some of the character flaws in each of the characters kind mm -hmm. of come out. And like it was 
in the previous episode, you know, first two had the characters kind of learning to get along. Um, the third episode had, um, you know, Sokka and uh, Katara kind of acting as uh, Aang's, uh, you know, family. Uh, that was ultimately the, the crux of the episode and sympathizing with him with what he's lost. But uh, in this episode, we learned that even though Aang is the avatar, he's also a kid, a kid that is can be childish. And in some way, like, sometimes that childishness is good, like at the beginning of the episode where we see his adventurous and fun-loving side. But in this episode, too, we see also a uh, mischievous... Uh, side and a uh, a little bit of a showboating side that wants to impress people and be liked. Yeah, we, what else do we see? Um, Sokka has some interesting characteristics come out during this episode too. Uh, up until this point, he's really just been the plucky comic relief. You know, being the guy who constantly thinks about food and chases down a lemur just because he was hungry. But in this episode, you can see Saka's more chauvinistic side. Mm -hmm. But it, it's it's not just that too, and certainly that plays a, a large component of it. Mm -hmm. So uh, Saka wants to be the hero. He wants to be the person that uh, is the the tough guy that people look to to defend them. And when he's not able to do that and gets taken out really quickly and you know sees how much better the the female warriors are he uh essentially just kind of beg he you know to his credit he humbles himself and asks to learn from them because he realizes that you know hey i'm not as good as i think i am let me um try to improve myself and uh, be try to become more useful and we think you know that think back to just episode two when uh, Sokka tries to take on Zuko and defend the village like Zuko just toys with him and plays with him uh, as much as you know he wants but in, in this episode uh, Sokka is able to actually kind of hold his own a bit after all that training, yeah, and uh, is able to at least get like a couple of hits in. Yep, I and mean, dodge he, he dodged a sweep kick uh, before he got taken out. So like, yeah, there was uh, there was some definitely uh, definitely some improvement there in regards to his ability as a warrior, which will be something that we see throughout the entirety of the show. Uh, Sokka's main arc throughout the whole thing is becoming the becoming the warrior. Right. He doesn't have bending abilities, but that's not going to stop him from finding a way to become useful. And let's see. And then there's Katara and her her kind of sticking point in this episode is that she kind of gets annoyed with both um, uh, Sokka and uh, Aang, especially Aang. You know, with Sokka, you know, it's mainly dealing with stuff that he takes care of in his arc, and more also kind of like brother, you know, sibling fights. Oh, for sure. We see a lot but of those. With, but with Aang, it's, uh, you know, there's a little bit of jealousy there when uh, he loses himself a bit and allows himself to be uh, kind of the the the, the eye off. of affection of so yeah the show off and it, it annoys her but, and you know she's definitely a little bit of Hermione a bit just a bit sunset where she want is focused more on the mission and what needs to be done. But there's definitely some jealousy there as well. 
and even the but even though Aang shows off and wants to impress all the girls there, when she doesn't show up to him trying to ride the Unagi, he is very disappointed at that. Mm -hmm. And of course, it wouldn't be a season one episode without a visit from Zuko. Mm -hmm. As we've already mentioned, he does show up at the village just at the wrong time. Right after right. Aang fails to ride the Unagi, declaring it not fun. Which is understandable. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't think it would be fun to be thrown from a... God, that thing had to be like a thousand foot eel. Just, given, uh, just given the fact that that thing raised its head over some of those cliffs gives you the scale of that thing. Huge. Definitely bigger than, you know, what we imagine like the Loch Ness Monster to be. Mm. Definitely we're talking prehistoric proportions. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Firebenders burn Kyoshi Village. All in an attempt to get Aang because they mm -hmm. spent too much time on the island. Which, uh, you know, it just shows them that they're con they're going to have to constantly be on the run and can't get too comfortable in places. Yeah, it's a good lesson to but, learn early. But, to their credit, before they leave, they're at least able to kind of right the wrongs a bit and uh, put out the fire uh, that's consuming uh, you know part of the village you know the village roofs and everything and saving the town from burning down oh absolutely overall this was a decent decently rounded episode it's not like an, a super action packed one but there's a lot of character development in the episode for multiple characters. Yeah. Oh, and we should actually touch on uh, the leader of the Kyoshi Warriors for a moment, Suki. Because she does become a bit of a recurring character over time. Also, eventually, the love interest of Sokka. Yes. And isn't she in the final battle? I can't remember. It's been a while since I've watched season three. Isn't she good? Yeah. Well, we'll talk about that more off there. I just want to, I think I remember, remember that. But uh, no, she's definitely a, uh, as soon as I saw her, I was like, oh, right. I, I remember her. And I really like the, interactions uh you know between her and, and Sokka I would actually say this is probably of all the characters this is the best episode uh like a, a good Sokka episode he oh, probably benefits so. the most from this episode you know with Aang it's more of just kind of like uh filling out the character a bit but with uh with Sokka I it's definitely like uh starting the road to uh, self-discovery. Mm, definitely. Because really, when you think about it, over the first three episodes, Sokka has really just been that plucky comic relief guy. He, he's kind of there. He's funny. He does his thing, helps out where he can, but there's not been very much in regards to character development till mm -hmm. this episode here. Yeah, I think that uh, pretty much takes care of all of that. Mm -hmm. And as a final final thought, I guess, um, on where we're going anyway, we will next be talking about the group's first foray, foray into the Earth Kingdom. Yes, as they, with a very entertaining character. Very much. 
But we will leave it there. And as always, we will thank you all for listening and all the stuff that we normally do. So if you would like to follow us throughout the week, you can always find me on Twitter at DRAlien201. I almost did my old one. It's still not quite used to the change I made a few weeks back, a month or so back. And uh, you can follow uh, the show at uh, Syndicated Pipe on Twitter as well. Greg, where can the people find you? Well, for better or worse, I'm still on Twitter. Uh, you can follow me there at uh, the underscore Badger Piper. Uh, I'm also on Instagram at the Badger Piper. So that's where you can kind of find my stuff. And of course, if you feel the need to email us, you can always uh, get a hold of us at our recycled email from when we were flash time, or, or, you know, fla yeah, flash time, or out of the, no, out of the Speed Force, starting as a flash time segment on a different show. You can get us at reverseflashtime at gmail.com. And as always, Excuse me. Have good smokes, great entertainment, and we'll see you next week. Catch you later. <laughs>